How you doing, folks? Papa Joe here. Don't mind me. I got two or three things going on at once. I uh, shot several videos coming down out of Salt Lake City to Houston, and I'm trying to upload them so the sun can put them all together. Maybe shot on my phone, pain in the butt, but we've seen some really cool stuff. So. Uh, I'm having to watch this to go private on them real quick so you can't see them before I'm ready for you to see them. So don't mind me. Uh, this morning, today Sunday, we're sitting in Houston already. Took off this morning from uh, Clovis, New Mexico. It's right at the state line. I mean, literally. Like, five miles, if that. And uh, we got channel surfing. Found us some sermons this morning. And believe me, out there, it's hard to find what I was looking for. I uh, got two different sermons out of it this morning. I'm going to try to combine the two of them together. I was awful tempted to stop and just do it right then and there and make this video, but I didn't have the time. It was uh, too tight on my time to get down here. I uh, can't think that rascal's name. He's got like a British accent. You hear him on the Christian channels preaching. Uh, American family channel thing. He got talking about something that was very near and dear to me. And uh, that's why a lot of times, I know it sounds like I'm down on churches, and I'm really not. I just try to make sure that y'all understand that going to church ain't it. That ain't what gets you to heaven. And uh, that's what he was preaching on this morning. And like I said, he's a big blue preacher. He was... Uh, like myself he's like well he started he told a story about this woman in uh, Ukraine or some a girl not a woman she was a girl like eight years old first time she ever got a pair of shoes she was eight years old and uh, somebody came by and gave her a used pair of shoes she was tickled to death and uh, and yes, I'm multitasking. I told you that. So uh, they put the shoes on her, and they was actually too small. So they was uh, hurting her feet, and her toes all crunched up, and all that. They're like, "How do they feel?" Oh, great! And she took off, and went outside to play. And uh, he said, "If you ask that girl, what are shoes?" should tell you it's something you put on your feet that hurt a lot but it allows you to go outside and play in the cold now you and I know that that's not what shoes are that's not a good definition of shoes but to that little girl that's what they were he said by the same token and that and I was quoting him that was his little deal there uh, he said by the same token if you ask some people what is Christianity, they're going to tell you, well, that's where you go to church and, and you memorize the Bible and you say certain prayers and you do this and start doing this and stop doing that and do something else and, and work at the church and, and just on and on and on. And he says, that ain't Christianity. And that's what I preach. That's not Christianity. Uh, he allowed, like myself, Christianity is your walk with God, your walk with Jesus. That is the personal relationship between you and Jesus. That is what is important. That is what gets you to heaven. Not the church, not the deeds, not memorizing the Bible verses. That's why, you know, I, I can't quote you 
book, chapter, and verse, and I tell you that all the time. I'm not interested in memorizing the Bible. Uh, he pointed out that the uh, uh, Pharisees, they knew the law, or the Bible of the time, and uh, they prided themselves on knowing the law and not breaking the law. But they had lost their walk with God. Now, Jesus wasn't about that. It was Jesus that told them, y'all are so busy studying the law that you lost it. You missed the target. You ain't even even close to the target. Y'all need to get right with God. You're not right with God. You're walking around with your nose up in the air, hollering, look at me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We don't break the law. Well, same thing modern day today, and I know a few people that they are so wrapped up in what they're doing for the church. And a very good friend of mine has often told me when he would do so, ah, oh, that's just another stone in my crown when I get to heaven. Well, I'm doing this at the church. That's just one more thing for me in heaven. If you're doing it to get in heaven, you're doing it for the wrong reason. That ain't the stuff that gets you to heaven. It's your walk with Jesus. Yes, knowing your Bible is good. It really is. Memorizing it isn't all bad if you do it for the right reasons and you don't lose your walk with Jesus. Now, he gave a few things that uh, I took notes driving down the road. They're just four little words, so, okay, five words. But, because uh, I wanted to mem remember them, not memorize, I wanted to remember them for this video. And uh, he, he said, do you know how to tell when you've lost your walk with Jesus? He says, first off, he says, uh, there's no joy. And uh, he quoted a verse where Jesus says, I give you my joy. My joy I give to you. He wants us to be happy down here. So if you're so busy trying to memorize or do deeds at the church or do this and do that, that it's not joy in your life, it's a burden, then you need to back up and regroup. Uh... He said that uh, uh, the power, you know, because Jesus told us that uh, you can do greater things than I. So the power of prayer, you know, uh, if you are praying and talking to Jesus and talking to God and you're in your walk real good with them and stuff is happening in your life and you know it's happening then you're on track if stuff ain't happening and you're just going through the motions you might want to stop and regroup think about what you're doing uh, then he got talking about Abba you know Jesus called God Abba which is daddy and it made a lot of folks mad that he was calling God dad and uh, what he got going on there was uh, okay I, I wanted to make sure I wasn't crossing up my notes there uh, what he got going on there is that God is our Father, and we pray to Him accordingly. He said that if you're finding yourself falling into the routine of only asking and asking and asking, then uh, something ain't right. You know, like any father, and I'm a father of six, I don't want my kids to only call on me when they need something. And you know there's a big joke in the parent-grandparent world about 
like that. Oh, I'll hear from them when they need something. Hold on a second. Got blow my nose. You don't want to hear it. All right, I'm back. Uh, there's a big joke amongst uh, parents and grandparents. We'll hear from them when they need something. Is that how you doing, God? Is that how you want to hear from your children? Only when they need something? In your prayer life, do you ever really take time just to say, Yo, God, thank you, man. This is awesome. Yo, God, thank you for just another day. Yeah, there's turbulence, but through you I can do all things. He that is in me is greater than the world that's against me. You know, do you ever just, yo, Lord, it's cool. And yes, I do stuff like that. And no, I don't think that that is necessarily a bad thing. Uh, the Holy Ghost is the one that is, uh, this thing skipped one of them on me, I think. Excuse me a minute. Uh, the Holy Ghost is, uh, the one that is supposed to change our words into what God understands. Because we can't pray right. It ain't in us. We can't do it. And that's part of the Holy Ghost job is to uh, decipher my hillbilly and put it into something that God can relate to. That's how I've always been told. And uh, I can deal with that. Because my wife has trouble understanding me at times. You know? I have trouble understanding me at times. But I think the good Lord uh, totally understands it when I just say, Yo, you know, you're an awesome God. You know? So, uh, now along with that, what you need to think about is uh, down here on earth, we have a lot of battles. Right here's one. And the uh, evil one, I think that's some folks that was bought my truck to train his buddy on uh, taking a test. Yeah, that is them. Well, maybe it ain't. I can't tell. But anyway, uh, you know, if the evil one can get in there and interrupt your prayers, and get you where you're not in communication with God on a regular basis several times a day, then uh, that's just a feather in his hat. Because to survive down here in any kind of a manner, uh, you need the good Lord. This is a wicked, wicked place. We constantly have stuff that comes up in our lives that is not pleasing to God. We have those thoughts. We have the habits. You know, we have the words. Uh, I've been trying to correct myself driving this truck. I'm around a lot of people that ain't. See? And I'll say, why you? What are you? that right? No. But I do it. I'm trying to correct myself on it. Now, if I know I have these problems, where do you get your power? Where's your back? Who's got your back? God does. Now, he used it, uh, he called it your, your supply line. Your prayer line is your supply line. Your prayers with God, your communication with God in a good way and not just asking for stuff. You're constantly praying to him and talking to him. And, and yeah, you ask for this, that, and the other, you know. Give me strength. Give me through this. But you're also, yo, thank you. You 
okay? So you've got a good communication going, a good line of communication. Well, that's your supply line. That's what gives you strength down here. If you've got the Holy Spirit working in you and God working in you, then that means the devil has got to work all that much harder to get at you. Now, an old jarhead like myself, that old boy, he used, uh, he said, you know, when you go to war, everybody tries to cut out your supply line. So if the devil can get in there and interfere with your prayer line, your supply line, then he done did something, you know? So talk to the Father, talk to Abba, talk to him regularly. And it ain't like you have to make a big ordeal out of it. You can be at work, I don't care if you're on an assembly line with somebody six inches off your shoulder, they don't even have to know that you're talking to God. You do it up here. If he built us from clay, he can read our feeble little minds. If you have the Holy Ghost in you, the, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, he's already in your mind and he's like, gotcha. All right, let me send this on. I'll forward this on up to the big guy. You know? And there's people that get offended by saying the big guy. The big guy in the sky and all this. They get offended by that. Why? I doubt that that offends God. That's just modern language. You know, modern slang. They had it back in Jesus' day. Please. I don't think God is so small-minded that you say the big boss. And he's like, oh, I'm offended. I'm the big boss. Guess what? He's the biggest boss there is. And he knows it. He told us, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. Why is he going to get mad because you said he was the big boss? Keep your chain of communication going. Work on your relationship with Jesus. Yes, you go to church because you the Bible plainly tells us that you want to be with like-minded people. I did a video on that, remember? You want to be with like-minded people. You want other people to encourage you. You want to be with other people you can encourage. You want to be there to learn off of each other. Yes, you do. You want to hear what the preacher has to say. He's supposed to be a teacher. You know, there are certain things that the Bible, Paul tells us that we're supposed to do. You know, and yes, you want to do those. But the most important of all of it is your relationship with God. Now, that brought me back to something that, uh, and I'm not going to look it up right now because I've got this other video and stuff going on. I was telling my wife when I was listening to that sermon today. You know, I was doing the book of Revelation, and I will get back on it. It's not, it's just over there I'm working on the book of Acts right now because of something else. But anyhow, in one of them letters to one of the churches, and I forget which one, I would dearly love to look it up. Uh, he told that church, he says, you have lost your first love, and you need to find your first love again. And I was a little baffled by that. I, it didn't ring to me. But during the sermon today, oh boy, he quoted that, and he says that first love was Jesus. That's why you became a Christian. That's why you're in the church, you know, and that's what he was telling them. Your first love was me. And you've lost it. Now they're doing the churchly things. And they lost their love with Jesus, their walk with Jesus. So, it was pretty cool. Now, I really enjoyed it. I learned quite a bit. I don't know if I relate it to y'all very good. But, uh, how many times have I told you? We have to be accountable for our actions. God's not going to listen to what well, the preacher said or the preacher didn't tell me that or the deacon didn't do or nothing else. He's going to say, your walk with me, what happened? Bottom line.
remember, God loves you, so do I. Let's help each other stay on our walk. Y'all have a good evening now. Good night.